Okay, J. Van Diesel back again. I've already did a board game for this game right here. Vegas showed I'm going to use it as a flat top for the next game. Go low. Same people that made Go Long made this one. And this, as you can tell, is a golf dice game. And it's a really cool one, too. Same thing as Go, as go Long. It's got a little, little bag. Interesting. A, a rule book. And a score chart. What? And Facebook off of uh, FYW. There are nine dice in the game. You have two blue dice, which count for your par five courses. I birded one. I birded a white dice. Two red, which are your par threes, and four, which are these four right here, which are your par four. Par four. Uh, you're gonna roll the dice. You do it in two halves, back half and front half of the course. And you're going to roll them out on the table. Ooh. Did pretty okay on this one. I'm going to... And then you're going to take one... You can do more than one, but if you do more than one, it counts as the holes. So you get three here. I birdied the, the, the first... Uh, my fault. I parred the first three. That's what the, the square box means. The square box means you par it. The circle is a birdie. I don't see a two on here, so I'm going to go to a one or two on here. Aha. Uh -huh. a, uh, a star around a number means you eagle the hole. Everything else is over par, which is not good. Let's see what I get on the next roll here. Ooh, and i got to keep at least one. So I'm going to keep the one that I parred. I parred the first four holes. Not good, but okay. Ooh, I'll take that one, and I'll take that one. I par the next two, and I gotta take whatever this one is. A five. Ooh, shit, double. So here's what my score would be. I am even par through the first one, two, three, four, five holes. I go down to a minus one, which is good. I stay at minus one for the next two, but then I double bogey the second hole. I mean, the last hole of the course. It was a par three, and I have a plus, five, uh, plus one now as my score for the first front of the half. Then, of course, you take all these dice, re-roll them back in the cut. You know, do it like that. Uh, there are rules for mulligans and penalties and strokes like that that you can just go ahead and refer to the rule book. Uh, the little <laughs> sheet here uh, for anything. Like you also have other ones like Ace is a hole in one. Also definitions of popular terms like Ace and Birdie and Bogey and everything like that. So you know, you know. Um, then of course when you do everything here, you write it like this, and it has three rounds of a uh, of a thing here. Like if you want to do like a tournament or whatever. The game is for one to four players. Um, you know, you can also do it if you do it separately. You know, if you want to do. Well, apparently this is different. Yeah, apparently they did it like that. Or also, you can roll the dice and play on this side, and you're playing off a 72 hole, but you're dealing with all the. The dice you're doing with two par threes, two par fives, and I don't know, wait, one, two, yeah, two par fives, and the rest of them are par fours. Um, pretty interesting uh, thing. I didn't actually notice that part of the score sheet until uh, later. The game that was very, very cool was very addictive. I've played it several times. I think my best score is like a negative two or a negative one, whatever the case is. And, um, yeah, it's really, really cool. I like how it goes. It's very, very fun. Very, very fast, too, which is a positive thing. And in case you didn't know who was making all those sound effects, there's the culprit right there, Alex Putnam AP. He's awesome. Um, you know, overall, the game gets a 4 out of 5. Uh, I wish it was less loud. 
than how it is. That is pretty loud. Yeah. But yeah, we're going to move on. We're going to move on. We're going to do a two for one. How about that one? Let's take you to my version of my closet here. Move this stuff out the way. Ladder ball and my hamper. I don't know why I have my hamper there. Let's look inside this plethora of games. And the next one I'm actually going to do is right here. It is Settlers of Catan. It is the gallery edition, which is different than the regular edition. As you see the last time of Betrayal House on the Hill, and then there goes Kung Fu Fighter. Damn it. Let's pick up, let's pick up Kung Fu Fighting. Everybody was Kung Fu Fighting. Uh, that game uh, made by Slugfest Games. Really, really fun game. Uh, that's about cards and Hollywood. Now, Catan is a game made by Mayfair Games. A very, very popular company. And a very, very popular game. This game has been done in so many different versions throughout the years. Uh, I've seen Settlers of Catan. I've seen Stormfront. Settlers of the Stone Age, which, if you ask me, is a pretty ridiculous version of this game. But it's you know, a game nonetheless. Um, it involves cards, which you can see here. You have your regular cards and your developmentals. You also have dice and hexes. The biggest part of the game. Let me set up a sample board here. I'll toss that over there. And I will get it started for you. So I'm going to set the camera down. I'll set it right here so you guys can see me. Hi, guys. Hey, how you doing? You can hear me as well. And yeah, you can, you can hear Alex. Alex. Yeah, you can torment Alex. Um, I should never ever say that out loud. Um, I need to find a three piece. Huh? Uh, wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Hold on. There we go. Bingo! Yeah, Wow, this is a really screwed up fucking board. <laughs> wow, uh, you know, I'm actually gonna put it that way. Okay, let me go ahead and I will take out the dice and I'll take out the cards and everything for you guys. So you can see how it works. He goes here. I will take these two cards out of the way. Shuffle up the rest of these developmental cards, because during the game you'll be you can pr purchase the developmental card, the development cards are like this um, throughout the game. There are different things on them, and there are different resources in the game, and I'll explain what they are because I have no other choice. It's kind of part of the job when you do a review like this. Um, this is actually, believe it or not, one of the first games I learned how to play as a really? board gamer. As really? a board gamer, yeah. Um. It's one of my favorites to play. And my brother can tell you a story about a guy named Hank. Um, Hank is a guy that loved to play this game. And <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh dear God. And this would be like the one game he would want to play all the time. And we'd play it on most occasions. Other than that, we'd play games like Power Grid and Puerto Rico and everything like that. And he would always... But he would always also want to know if there's anyone that brought settlers. And there's also pieces I'll show you too. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, these different pieces here. I have white, uh, I have the white, white piece, white circle. Okay. Um, during the game, also you can have. Okay. So I'm back. This is back onto the board. I'll move this stuff aside here. You have your hexagons here. Oop, I knocked over the robber. Oh well. Um, which have different numbers and different things on it. These count... The numbers are, of course, representing what the die roll is going to be. The dot next to it, like this one has a 1. 8 has a 4. 9's got a 4. No, 8 has a 5. I'm sorry. Pretty much can amount to how many times the number will roll during the game. And then you can base your judgments off of that. Uh, like in this case, I have a 10, which would be... Ooh, wow, a 10's worth of brick. Nice. Oh, and a wheat. Cool. Uh, each of these represents something different. Like I mentioned, this is a brick. That's for brick. This is for wheat. This is for ore. 
This is for lumber or wood, and this is for sheep. Brick or wheat, sheep, and wood. Okay, those are the five main resources that you get right here. And you use those to build settlements, cities, and ooh, roads. It sticks. Now this is a scoring marker. They will go on to two at the start of every game because everyone will have two points because they will build two settlements and two roads. Uh, roads are worth no points. Settlements are one. Cities are two. And they also give you twice the resources if you're on that number. So let's say I'm playing a game and I have my guy here and my guy... Um, let me see, I'll put it... I'm not a good spot to put anything at this point, damn. Ah, uh, right there. Okay. Two settlements, and I, let's just say I have rows because I'll pass time. Um, and I want to upgrade. I'll put it over here to make it a smarter decision. Boom. So now if a 4, a 10, or an 8 get rolled, I get 2 of that resource. But if I was over here and an 8, a 9, or a 3 gets rolled, I only get 1. Settlements, when you have them out, count as one resource of that type. Cities count as two. Cities count as two. Uh, also, you can during the game, when you have enough stuff, uh, you can buy the resources in these developmental cards. These developmental cards right here. Things such as... Ooh, a knight. You get three of those. You get this card right here called the largest, largest army, and it's worth two victory points. If you build a road of five or longer, you get the longest road, which counts as two points. And you know you have other things here, like knights and year of plenty, road building. Um, there's one here called Monopoly. I'm trying to find it. There's a library, which is worth a victory point. Monopoly. You know, the chapel. Other cards in there, which are victory points also as well. And your main object is to get to ten victory points. And in case you don't know what something does, or how to build a certain something, these parts right here, brick and a uh, wood get you a road, a sheep, wheat, brick and wood get you a settlement, counting as a point, three ore, two wheat give you a city, and, yeah, three wheat and two ore give you a city, no, three ore, two wheat give you a city, I'm sorry, and a sheep, an ore and a wheat get you a developmental card, okay? Now, the only rule with the developmental card is if it's not a victory point, you cannot play it on the same turn. Unless it is a victory point. If it is a victory point, you can just say, okay, victory point. Right there on the table. There you go. You know? And it's a race to ten points. Now, during the game, also, you have a chance to go ahead and trade resources with other players. So, let's say, let's say, I'm going to use my brother here for this one. You're going to hear him via audio. Okay? Um, hey, Jimmy, you know, I see you, I know you have a couple sheep you're trying to get rid of. I have a wheat. Would you like to trade that wheat for sheep? Uh, then yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, and you would trade that. Or, you can just say, I have an open trade, I have sheep, I'm looking for brick, or whatever the case may be. You might get a trade. You might not get a trade. You might not. You never know. It depends on... What's done, what's said. Um, you know, and it's a really, really fun game. And personally, you know, I think, um, it's very enjoyable. Also, these ports, there's a two for one, uh, or two for one wood, two for one sheep, two for one brick. And a two for one wheat. These three for one ports, which are here, uh, here, uh, here, and here. Okay. Um, those are ports. You can trade two for one or three for one of a certain uh, resource for one, any one of your choice. If you want to trade in from the bank and you not you're not on a port, it's four of the same resource. You know, and at this point in time, that's pretty much what I say. I think the game is a very, very fun game. It's one of my favorites to play overall. Uh, it's the first game I got into when I got into board gaming 
and it is a very, very enjoyable one. It takes about maybe a half an hour to 45 minutes, maybe an hour to play, depending on who you have. And it's for, uh, this this version is solely for four people. One thing I also want to mention, let's say, and I'm going to, oh, wow, first roll. A seven is rolled. That's a big thing also. This little guy, the robber, gets to move around the board to any hex you want to put him, except for the desert. He's not allowed to move back there once he's been there, which is the beginning of the thing. Um, also, you get to take a card from an opponent. So if me and Alex were playing, I could go ahead, cover up one of his numbers, and say I'm taking a card from Alex. But why would you want to do that? Because you never know what you might get. You might get something you need later on. You know? Um, but before I move the robber, it's anybody that has seven cards or more in their hand must discard until... I mean, my fault. More than seven cards, I'm sorry, more than seven must discard down to seven cards. Okay? The game, like I mentioned, though, it takes about 45 minutes for an hour to play. It's really fun. Seven, uh, The seven card idea, you know, the resources, the maximum buildings, everything you can do is a lot of fun. And one of these days I'm going to bring this game with me, like I was going to do Stratomatic, and I'll do a double game, and I'll show you how this game works. Play this game a couple times. Hopefully, if my cousin comes down from the summer, because I know, I know that the summer, uh, my cousin wants to come down. If she can, then what we'll do is I'll play a game, and I'll film it, and I'll put it up on YouTube, and we'll go over it. <laughs> Alex think that, thinks that's sick, and that's an awesome idea. Um, but yeah, this game's a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun talking about it. If you want to purchase this game, it is called Settlers of Catan. It is from Mayfair Games. Overall, the rating gets a 5 out of 5. It's a little complex, but it's also really easy to understand. Um, I personally think it's one of the best games I've played, besides the fact of me playing Vegas Showdown, Dominion, Resident Evil, all that stuff. And it's a lot of fun to do, and I can't wait until the next review, which... Uh, pick one, Alex. Resident Evil or uh, Dominion? Evil. I'll do Resident Evil next, and by request. That will be the next board game I do review. And then, of course, I will do other games such as Resident Evil, uh, such as Dominion, such as, oh, I don't know, Saturday Night Football, which I have up there, too, which is a card game uh, that you use with watching football, pretty much. All right. That's going to do it for me, guys. I'll see you next time right here on the channel. Thank you.